Alright, what's going on guys? Uh, today I'm going to continue the build on the uh, hybrid uh, 22T 25D that you guys have probably seen my previous videos on. Um, so today I want to finalize all of the oil pan stuff. I'm going to make sure all the pickup tube stuff is all tight and everything. Um, if you guys remember from the last video, um, I'm converting this to an EJ257 oil pan setup because we got this Killer B pickup tube off of a 257 so if I want to use it I gotta have a matching oil pan um, and if you want to have the matching oil pan you gotta have the matching dipstick too um, which I, I went over all that in the last video so I'm not gonna go over all of it again but that's gotta go on so I'm just gonna make sure all these bolts are tight and clean up the surface and then I can uh, put some silicone RTV on there um, and get this pan on for the final time uh, I also got some new O-rings for the dipstick tube. Um, we got to make sure everything's clean and everything before I do this. Um, the other thing I'm working on today is the intake manifold again. So uh, this is the 25D intake manifold. So um, it needs a little bit more modification. I've already deleted the EGR, which I went over uh, last time. So um, I had the machine shop just cut it off and weld it closed. Um, but the other thing. I forgot to ask them to do is to drill uh, two holes and tap them for a barb fitting. So what I'm going to do is I got these these little barb fittings uh, that are three eighths pipe thread. Um, so I'm going to drill a hole in here, put one right there, and this one's going to go to the map sensor because um, the 25D doesn't have a map sensor, so it doesn't need a vacuum port for it. Um, the other one I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here. Um, right here where uh, it, it normally is on like a turbo, a factory turbo motor. Um, this one will be for the um, the recirculating valve. The, it needs a pressure source for that. So um, I just got to drill a couple holes in that. Um, I got my, I think I'm going to use this giant fitting or um, drill bit thing here. Um, so once I get all this done, I can clean the manifold for the final time. Um, oh, the other modification that I have to do on this that uh, nobody really mentions is when you, um, you're you doing a, a hybrid build like this. Um, so I have a, a 22T block with two 5D heads. So like these are heads from a 98 GT. So the combustion chamber is about 6 cc's bigger than um, a 22. So that would lower your compression ratio from like 8.0 to 1 to like... 7.4 to 1 and that's really bad you don't want to lower your compression it'll just basically make it gutless when you're out of boost so what I what I'm doing is I'm using um, I, lots of other people do this I'm not the only one who does this my, my brother's whole setup is just like this um, and countless other hybrid builds have been done like this but I'm using a thinner head gasket so this th head gasket's about I, th I think it's about 0.6 millimeters thinner than a factory one, so it's 1.03 millimeters thick instead of like the 1.6 or whatever it's supposed to be for a 22T. Um, these you have to match the bore size with the block. So this is a 22 bore size um, with, you know, that's the right thickness for this setup. So if you guys are interested and you're doing one of these yourself, you can just get these head gaskets for, they're actually really cheap. They're from Kometic. Uh, Kometic makes amazing gaskets. Um, this is the part number right here, C4263-040. And that dash 040 is the thickness size. So that's basically in um, inches. It's like 0 .040 inches, which is one millimeter or 1.03 millimeter. So um, they have them in different sizes. If you wanted to go a little thicker, you can. Um, but this is the um, head gasket that you need to, uh, to do this so you can keep the factory compression ratio. But when you do that, you are bringing the heads closer together about a millimeter. So when you go to put your intake manifold on, the intake manifold bolts will not line up um, because they're, they're spaced too far out. So what you actually have to do is take a drill bit and oval out these holes a little bit on the inner side so um, you can actually fit the bolts in. 
which that's really all you have to do. There's no nothing dangerous about doing this. The intake manifold gaskets and everything still lines up. The injector still lines up. It's just they're about one millimeter spaced out. So you just have to take a little bit of material off each one all the way around. Um, and that's there's eight of them. So there's you know two in here and two on the outsides. So you just got to oval all those holes out. It's kind of a it's kind of a process to do it because you know you're going to get metal shavings everywhere, and so you would have got to be really careful that every time you test fit it back on your engine, you get it all cleaned off because you don't want any metal shavings to get down inside the heads. That could be really bad. So I think I'm going to first. I think I'm actually going to drill this out. Um, start getting these holes ready to be tapped. I still need to go buy a tap that's a three-eighths pipe thread, but both my fittings are the same size, so it should make that easy. So I got the oil pan all uh, RTV done here. Um, it just bolts on like normal. Um, I used the regular. I got brand new uh, O-rings for the dipstick tube. Um, I got my Mishimoto magnetic oil drain plug in here because uh, inevitably some oil is gonna probably you know end up in the pan after you know the first startup and all that stuff. So right now I'm just gonna check the valve lash. Um, so basically all we're going to do is stick a little, <clears throat> move the cam around until it's off the lobe. I'm assuming yeah, about there. And then you just kind of stick a, um, a feeler gauge under the cam in between the bucket. Um, and just check how much space there is between the bucket and the cam. So the first um, numbers here on the left are in standard and the right ones are in metric. So these are, they're basically, I just measured them, they're all at point, um, 0 0.20 millimeters um, on the intake and then these are all about 0.25 or 0.24 on all these so that's right in the middle of spec so I'll uh, clean this up put the valve cover on um, and I can do the other side. I like to put little dabs of RTV here in the corners um, around the cam caps just to basically seal the valve cover gasket down um, in these little so this corners. is how I do it. Um, I do it to about, I did it to like 65 foot pounds, but I basically just put a wrench on here and then take my torque wrench and put it up here and then just kind of pull them against each other. Um, I think this is actually supposed to be like a, um, a degree adjustment thing where you do it to like 20 foot pounds and then you turn it like 75 degrees or something. Um, but everybody else says it equals out to about 70, 75 foot pounds. Um, which is about what I did. I think I did like 68 or something like that. Feels plenty tight for these little things. So I'm gonna throw the valve covers on. I got some RTV here in the corners. Uh, probably got a little bit too much. I'm gonna clean that up. You don't really need much. Just kind of get it in the corner. Super necessary, but with these, I got these cheap grommets. They're not OEM. Um, I'm just gonna get a little bit of RTV here on the rim. And then when I put my bolt in here, it'll, it'll kind of RTV the head of the bolt to it. And then I'm also going to put some on the bottom side here. Side's all done now. So that's it for the valve covers. Um, I still need to get some motor mounts. I don't have any motor mounts yet. Um, and the other thing I need to do, so I was going to mention, let me flip this guy over, yeah. is I need to delete this crankcase pressure port that's right here in the top of the block. So normally a little elbow pops out of the top of here on a 2-2-T and this tees together with the valve covers to even out crank pressure but as you can see these 2-5-Ds only have one port on here so this really isn't needed because it all, you already have your PCV you know through the crankcase one right there so um, and I actually don't even have the elbow piece for this because this was just a bare block um, and my, my brother used this elbow piece on his so um, I don't actually have that piece, so what I'm going to do is I found Napa has, um, they have 12, because I measured it with my micrometer thingy, and um, it's exactly 12 millimeters in diameter. So I'm thinking if I can just, if I get a, a freeze plug that's 
12 millimeters in diameter, I can just kind of press that guy in there. And it'll be brass, so it should be a little bit weaker than the aluminum, and it won't mar it. But that's the plan with that. So I just tapped this stuff. So I went down to Napa, and I got a 1 8 pipe thread tap. You can see the 1 8 2 7 NPT pipe tape, whatever. Um, really, what, if you're doing this yourself, you just got to get one of these that matches whatever fittings you get. So I went ahead and put one in right here where we drilled those other holes and one down there for the bullet valve. So I kind of messed up the tape a little bit. I mean the, the uh, paint a little bit, but looks pretty good. It's airtight. I used some thread tape in there. So now um, I still need to oval out these bolt holes right here. Just take a little bit out on the inside of each one. Um, then I'm going to wash this thing out with the hose, just try to get all the metal shavings out of it, get it as clean as possible. Kind of hard so. to see, but I, I ovaled out this one a little bit. Um, and down in this hole, you can kind of see how that's like just a little bit off. Like it's not that far off. It's maybe like a millimeter or two. So what I think I'm going to do is actually just oval out one side. So I'm going to oval out these sort of like I did here. Let me take this guy out. So see, I just took a little bit of material off that end. So I think I'm just going to do that to all three of these, or all, the other three of these, all four. Um, and then basically I, the, the intake manifold is just going to be shifted over like a millimeter. Um, and then that way everything should line up. Um, everything should thread in nicely. Um, everything clears nicely. So let's, let's work on that. Right, so. The uh, intake's all bolted on. Well, I mean, I'm just kind of in here test fitting it. Um, I only had to oval out one side of these. So these are the ones that are ovaled out. You can see it, there's a little lip right here where the fuel injector goes in. There's still some water on here too, but that's uh, not really a problem. Um, this side's all set up as well. I didn't have to oval out this side at all, so that's just kind of how it sits. So um, <clears throat> I also threw on my oil filter. I just got some cheap micro guard ones because um, I'm just gonna, you know, I gotta break this motor in. So um, I got some cheap O'Reilly's, you know, conventional 530 oil. Um, so when I first turn this thing on, I'm gonna let it warm up, get to operating temp, make sure the thermostat opens, coolant's all, you know, flowing properly, nothing's leaking, and then drain the oil, change the filter and then drive it for 500 miles and then I'm basically going to change it every 500 miles after that for like 1500 maybe 2000 I don't know I might change it sooner but that's my plan anyway so I picked up um, two jugs of oil and stuff um, I still got to take the tape and stuff out of here um, but that's uh, that should be it for the modifications on the intake manifold you can see everything's fitting pretty nicely I got to swap out these sensors as well because these are all painted over and nasty but it's looking really good oh I almost forgot to mention I uh, I picked up some of this Lucas um, break-in additive so I'm gonna add this to uh, that first first oil change I run it in so I'm not sure if I should like run like half of this in like the first oil change and then run the other half in the one I'm actually gonna drive the car um, I don't know. I'll, I'll think about Dressing it. Dressing up the intake manifold. Just putting the uh, fuel rails on. Um, and I noticed I ran into a problem. I don't actually have the little uh, rubber seal thing that goes in on these guys that sits in the manifold inside here. So um, I need to do another run to the dealership, I guess, and get more, more O-rings. Um, I got all the other O-rings, like the ones on the ends here. Um, they go on on these guys. Basically, those right there. I got new ones of those. Um, but I don't have those bushings that the fuel rails actually sit in. So, and they really don't want to mess with fuel and, you know, have something leak. So, um, but I can't put my throttle body on because I'm going to be using the one that's actually on my car now. So, I got to pull the motor out and, uh, you know, sort of you know strip everything down and get um, all the parts I need off that car so um, that's gonna do it for this video guys I try not to make this too long but she's coming together uh, next time I'm gonna be finishing up all this stuff probably 
I think this weekend I'm going to pull the motor out of the wagon. Um, so then I can, you know, get the wiring harness on this thing. I can actually bolt down the intake manifold for good. You know, I can put the throttle body on, idle air control valve, get everything all situated. I'm still waiting on some parts, like I'm going to be doing the MSD coil pack. Uh, I need a boost controller. There's a few other things I need, but anyway, I'm going to leave it here. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, if, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to keep following this, see how this uh, turns out on its first startup. But uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next time.